Most spacecraft interiors look like something out of the Cold War, cramped, cluttered, and packed with switches. Then SpaceX built Crew Dragon, full touchscreens, custom-fitted seats, an actual toilet, and a capsule so intuitive, civilians have flown it with minimal training. Compared to every other crew capsule flying today, Dragon's interior isn't just different. It's better in every measurable way. The layout is clean. Three large touchscreens replace traditional control panels. There are around 30 physical buttons, only for critical functions like abort or radio. Almost all other interactions are done through the screens. Each screen displays mission data, navigation, life support status, and control interfaces. Inputs are possible with gloved hands. Visual cues confirm every interaction. Crew Dragon supports up to seven crew. NASA typically flies four. The seats are custom molded from carbon fiber and foam, tailored to each astronaut using body scans. The seating posture is reclined to reduce G-load stress. The SpaceX suit connects to the seat using an umbilical, integrating air, power, and communication. This reduces cabin clutter. The seat can rotate into position automatically. The cabin interior is finished with smooth white panels and black accents. Materials include fire-resistant alcantara and carbon fiber. LED lights provide soft white illumination. Air temperature and humidity are regulated between 18 to 25 degrees Celsius. Crew Dragon has a pressurized volume of 9.3 cubic meters. The cabin is open with systems embedded in the walls or the external trunk. This leaves space for floating and movement. There is an onboard toilet located at the ceiling behind a curtain. Four small windows around the hatch allow Earth viewing. On certain missions, like Inspiration 4, the docking port is replaced with a panoramic cupola. The capsule is solar-powered, enabling several days of free flight. During Inspiration 4, it remained in orbit for three days independently. When docked, Crew Dragon can remain attached to the Annette for over six months. Dragon is too fault tolerant. Its flight computer system is triple redundant. Guidance, navigation, and control are fully autonomous. Docking uses LIDAR and optical tracking. The crew can intervene via touchscreen but is rarely required to. The capsule is fully reusable. Each vehicle is rated for at least five flights, with some cleared for up to 15. Interior components are designed for refurbishment between missions. Compared to other capsules, Crew Dragon prioritizes crew usability, automation, and comfort. Boeing's Starliner also seats up to seven, typically flying four. Its pressurized volume is about 11 cubic meters, slightly more than Dragon. The interior includes two display screens and a large number of physical switches, including overhead panels. Starliner's control interface is conservative. It favors manual switches for redundancy. The capsule can be manually piloted using joysticks and traditional buttons. Seating in Starliner is modular, with removable seats and 3D printed inserts. The layout is spacious when flying for. There is no built-in toilet. Missions are designed to last 24 to 48 hours. The spacecraft is battery powered, with an endurance limit of around 60 hours. Comfort is basic. The cabin uses LED lighting and has side windows. There are no entertainment systems. Crew must rely on diapers for bodily functions during flight. NASA's Orion capsule is designed for long-duration deep space missions. It has about 9 cubic meters of habitable volume and a total pressurized volume of around 20 cubic meters. Orion seats four astronauts. The seats are foldable to allow for movement, exercise, and sleeping arrangements during missions up to 21 days. The interior includes a hygiene bay with a full toilet system and privacy curtain. The cockpit has three large touchscreens and around 67 physical switches. Manual controls are present for docking and attitude control. Orion is highly autonomous but includes manual redundancy. Life support systems include full atmosphere recycling, radiation shielding, and water recovery systems. Power is supplied by solar panels on the European-built service module. Orion is not intended for short missions. Russia's Soyuz is the oldest operational capsule. It carries three crew in a very confined space. The descent module, where astronauts are seated during launch and landing, has around four cubic meters of space. 
The crew's knees are bent and shoulders touch. Controls are analog heavy. There are two small digital screens and many physical switches. Manual docking is done with a joystick and optical periscope. Most operations require direct crew input. Automation is limited. Soyuz uses a basic environmental system. There is no toilet. Crew wear absorbent garments. The descent module has no room to stand or float. Missions usually last six hours to dock with International Space Station, though up to two days is possible with discomfort. The capsule has minimal habitability. A separate orbital module offers limited relief, but is discarded before re-entry. Landing is rough using retro rockets just before touchdown. Soyuz is not reusable. Each capsule flies once. Comparing control interfaces. Crew Dragon uses a full touchscreen system. It simplifies operations and reduces training time. Starliner and Orion use hybrid systems with manual switches. Soyuz uses analog controls. In terms of comfort, Dragon has custom-molded seats, open cabin space, and modern lighting. Starliner is functional but lacks amenities like a toilet. Orion is built for extended stays with more facilities. Soyuz offers the least comfort. On life support, Dragon supports four people for several days using solar power and carbon dioxide scrubbers. Starliner supports short trips only. Orion supports weeks of travel with full recycling systems. Soyuz has limited capacity and relies on fast docking. For automation, Dragon is the most autonomous. Orion follows with partial manual capabilities. Starliner emphasizes manual redundancy. Soyuz relies heavily on ground control and manual input. Astronaut feedback confirms these differences. NASA astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken reported Dragon's touch interface worked well. Starliner has not yet flown crew as of 2025. Training crews noted the interior was roomy and familiar, but pointed out the lack of a toilet as a disadvantage for off-nominal situations. Dragon's technical innovations include its touchscreen-based cockpit, fully automated flight, integrated suit seat system, reconfigurable interior, and reusability. Its touch interface is the first primary flight control system operated entirely by touch. Suits and seats are co-designed to function as one system. The absence of control sticks is unique. All manual operations are done on screen. This eliminates clutter and simplifies training. The reusability of interior components reduces long-term mission costs. Crew Dragon is adaptable. It has flown NASA missions, private missions, and even tourist flights like Inspiration4. It supports multiple seat configurations and cargo layouts. Its safety systems, including integrated launch escape, autonomous docking, and fault-tolerant flight computers, allow for minimal crew workload while maximizing safety. In conclusion, Crew Dragon's interior is superior for low-Earth orbit missions. It has the most advanced user interface, the most comfortable seating, a functional layout, and better crew experience compared to Starliner and Soyuz. Orion exceeds Dragon in endurance and long-duration mission capability, but is optimized for deep space. For short orbital flights, Dragon is the leading capsule in terms of usability, design, and operational performance. The combination of automation, ergonomics, comfort, and mission flexibility makes Crew Dragon's interior the best among operational crew capsules today. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.